better. Good morning. Uh, I'm delighted to share with you the most exciting learning experience that I've been involved with as an educator. It begins with a question. Imagine you could create inquiry that would engage everyone in your college and would also change how you think about learning. That's what happened with the Compassion Project. We started with an invitation from GE Healthcare. They designed visual imaging equipment, MRIs, CT scanners, mammogram machines. GE Healthcare challenged us not to think about a typical uh, problem or a typical sponsored design project, but to focus on the human story and the deeper purpose of healthcare. For example, MRI machines are loud, scary, and demand that a patient be extremely still for about 45 minutes. GE asked students, to, or asked children to do that, by the way. They have to be sedated. GE invites children into a pirate story. The MRI room is transformed into a pirate ship. The kids get a book that prepares them ahead of time. If the children know that they need to be still to avoid capture by the pirates, they need less sedation. GE showed us a portable mammography machine. They didn't want us to design the surface. They wanted us to think more deeply. They posed a question. What role can artists and designers play in the women's healthcare journey? That question put a pretty deep hook in a lot of us as educators at the beginning of the fall semester. And a lot of us just climbed on board. What would happen if we positioned empathy and compassion into the core of all of the students' learning across the campus. We started at GE Healthcare's global design uh, facility, where 50 students and faculty engaged in a deep dive into empathy. We listened to the stories of women who've experienced breast cancer. Here in the lower left is Lisa in her striped sweater sharing her story of when she was diagnosed with cancer. Here are some of the students and faculty sharing their stories triggered by listening to stories. Sticky pads. Wouldn't it be nice if three women shared their breast cancer journeys with us? These were tough stories to listen to. One woman, 33, told of how she and her sister were both diagnosed with Huntington's disease in college, how they survived the treatment, and then later, how they were each diagnosed with breast cancer. First one breast at 28, then the other at 30, each of them. Stories. Meanwhile, as we listened, we filled out sticky notes with W-I-B-N-I, wouldn't it be nice if, and then the ideas that we riffed off when we listened to them, we jotted down, trying to create, let's say, 50 during a 30-minute session. Wouldn't it be nice if we were learning to listen with empathy? After that deep dive, our industrial design seniors created a learning wall for the college, a place where everyone could go and share stories and ideas. This became the primary learning site for the college. For the rest of the year, ID seniors served as project leaders, generously inviting the rest of the college into the project. Here is a part of the learning wall. Posted here are questions and suggestions from freshmen to seniors to faculty, part of it on the W-I-B-N-I, wouldn't it be nice if? Wouldn't it be nice if healthcare workers listen to you and your story? Wouldn't it be nice if diagnosis and treatment rooms were designed to promote health and well-being 
not to house equipment. Wouldn't it be nice if you could keep your dignity? And my favorite from a freshman, wouldn't it be nice if you could be angry? Here's a close-up of one of the walls, and you can see that everyone in the college is participating in the learning. The learning wall, again, became a site to invite others into our inquiry. Here, two senior ID students present the Compassion Project to GE researchers from across the globe. These are folks who share a $68 million annual research budget. They've gone through three uh, managers in th five years because they can't get along. We brought them here for a week to learn from our students. After this presentation by our seniors, one of the women remarked, you know, if they can learn how to have this kind of inquiry, it seems to me that we ought to be able to learn how to talk to one another. The ID seniors also annexed part of our gallery and transformed it into an idea lab where artists and designers and faculty could meet to ideate, discuss, make models, conduct critiques, and learn from one another. The idea lab was used by over half of the college. Here's a glimpse of the lab. We thought it was important that all students share the same learning space. Now, let me show you some specific ways that students participated in the Compassion Project. 13 freshmen crafted 60-second videos in which they personally explored what compassion means. 160 freshmen engaged in a design thinking exercise that put them in the middle of the inquiry. We put them at the learning wall, observe deeply, then enter the inquiry yourself, start filling out the WIBNI, and join us. Art direction students collaborated on a Remind Her public service video to support women facing their annual mammogram appointments. They also created public service posters that reframed ideas of beauty and promoted health and well-being as a strategy for avoiding breast cancer. Here's a series of those PSA posters by one student and another student's PSA poster. 18 integrated studio art students created art based on the word empathy. This is the work of sophomore Anna Stevens. Everyone used the learning wall and the idea lab as rich sites for ideation and discussion, as well as research and critiques. We created common sites of inquiry in a building filled with separate rooms, separate departments, separate silos. Visiting designer Mark Rios participated in critiques and dialogues throughout the building, throughout the curriculum, providing credence to our common inquiry. Here's Rios uh, leading a compassion project critique in the IDEA lab. Our freshmen in humanities read Susan Sontag's Regarding the Pain of Others. They developed uh, compassion-based action plans that improve the community. Advertising students created a cancer awareness and compassion campaign. One student imagined a support group dedicated to women with stage four cancer. These are the women who are ostracized because they're terminal and they have no place, seemingly, in the healthcare journey. How can we provide these women with a space to value their stories and to form their legacies for others? In service learning, 40 students conducted community-based research on health and poverty in Milwaukee. 
each student was assigned a specific neighborhood to research. In a compassion fine arts elective, students created art that focused on compassion. Sophomore Alyssa Anderson, it still kills me, sophomore, attended an American Cancer Society meeting and presented a proposal with a budget to make a site-specific sculpture for their May Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk. She did that in February. Here is her solution. Imagine during the day of the walk, five to 6,000 predominantly women coming towards this, looking at the inverted ribbon and finding inside little seed packets. I don't know if I've ever seen a more profound moment in the hubbub of 6,000 people, women coming up in very private ways to face this piece. In all, 10 seniors featured work triggered by the Compassion Project for their senior thesis exhibition. We have about 140 students who uh, we feature every year. Photography student Kayla Macy documented her own cancer journey, which was taking place during that senior year. ID senior Brett Pearson created a fashionable robe that is mailed to women before their mammography appointment. The, the robe is designed to make a fashion statement. It's a keeper and also reduce unnecessary exposure during exams. ID senior Sarah Geraldson created a sanitary hygiene solution for use in cultures where girls use leaves to staunch their menstrual bleeding. In some cultures, women stop attending school once they begin their periods because they have no access to hygiene and they are ostracized by men. Earlier, someone mentioned about those students who sometimes get lost in the process, and then in these kinds of projects, they find themselves and elevate quickly. Michael Stilp is one of them. ID senior Michael Stilp created a hanging hospital bed where women can get chemotherapy when no hospital room is available. In Haiti, a woman may need to walk for two days to reach a medical center that has no treatment rooms. These beds can be suspended from trees outside the medical center and can be closed for privacy. So what did we learn? The Compassion Project, a year-long project, transformed learning and learners at MyEd. Over 320 students participated. We have about 620 students. Over 20 faculty participated. We created new interdisciplinary learning sites. Together, as a community, we became entangled in an inquiry that is far different than what happens in separate rooms and separate courses that we all offer. So together, we created an irresistible curricular moment in, a, in a, a series, a handful of curricular moments that are rooted in empathy and compassion. ACAD schools, by their nature, seem especially equipped to offer this kind of deep, interdisciplinary, college-wide inquiry. What are the questions that can drive artists and designers to change their learning, and in so doing, change the world. Thank you.